Hello everybody and welcome to the last batch of Hemlock Player Cards. Huge thank you to the person who got their box early by buying it at a store, as far as I know. And uh, uploading all the cards here in nice high quality PNG images that we're able to check out and react to. I've stayed away from them. These have been out for a day now. I've stayed away from this. We're going to be looking at the survivor, neutral, and basic weaknesses here today. I'm not going to be talking about any cards that we've previously already covered on the channel. Um, just because I don't want this video to be too long. I'm very good at talking longer than I need to about things. And getting sidetracked and talking about different things. So I'm going to try to avoid that as much as I can by only focusing on cards that I've already uh, or ignoring cards that I've already talked about. So why don't we dive in and we'll stop at the first new card we see, which is this elaborate distraction. Very elaborate. This should probably be illicit or criminal as the traits, just looking at the art here. But this is a three cost event. I think this actually was like a pyro um, pyromania um, card from other previous Arkham Files games. So three cost event. Commits for everything but a book. Trick and double. Additional cost to play a labor distraction. Spend an action. Playing a labor distraction does not provoke attacks of opportunity. For each enemy at your location and each connecting location, choose one. Automatically evade that enemy if it is non elite. Deal one damage to that enemy. Okay, it's not awful to be honest. I'm just sorry, I'm just thinking. Yeah, because, like, <clears throat> it does. Good for Swarm and that's it? I don't think so. How many enemies do you need to... You need to do... Like, how many enemies are you looking at dealing with with the turkey, right? Because what I think really nice about this card is that... You also can, like, get away from it, too. Because it's also enemies at a connecting location. For each enemy at your location, each connecting location. Choose one. Dude, honestly, I can see this card actually being a very comfortable um, 30th card as a one of. In a lot of decks. Not every deck. But, like, I don't think it's a bad card. I don't think it's great. I mean, it has good symbols. Like, the symbol... Like, I think, like, if the symbols were worse, obviously, I don't think you could run it. But the thing is that this card actually is not asking for a lot for it to just, like, not trigger, right? Like, if you don't play it, you're going to commit it to a brain, fist, or foot test. The three tests that survivors, like, love doing. Um, and if you need it, it's going to save your life, right? It's going to, like, it's going to... Like, I don't know if it's going to last through all the scenarios, but I'm going to play the hell out of this card in, like, in too deep, probably, right? Because if I don't need it, I'm going to win, and if I need it, it basically just stops everything, right? Like, the two actions does suck, but you can mitigate that in other ways in the right deck. I think this card's actually a pretty good effect. I don't think it's great. What do you think of the new double mechanic? I think it's fine. Um, it, it's not really, like, my cup of tea. But I think there's only been one card of the cards I've seen that I think are bad, right? Uh, which is the Mystic one. I think that one's not good. And I think everything else is at least, like, good or has a home, you know? I do wish, though, that, like, because there was the Seeker one that had a Wild. I feel like every one of these double cards probably should have had a Wild as well. If the, if the Seeker one's gonna get it, I think everyone else good should. I know that, like, the thing about Seekers is that, like, one of their parts of their Color Pie Slice is that they have good commit icons. But I think that could sh share into other people, too. I think Elaborate Distraction is a very playable card, though. I think there's a lot of use cases when it can actually do, like, incredible things. You get a two-resource discount, re uh, two discount. 
to make up for the fact that you have to spend a double action. Like comparing it to Turkey, right? I think it's like, I think it's worse, but also better than Turkey in other places. And being able to just like kill small health enemies is really nice as well. I think the card's cool. Uh, I think it's, I, I think also the symbols make it very easy to just slot in as a 30th card. I don't think it's going to do anything crazy, but I think the card is, there's nothing bad about it, I don't think. Uh, we've seen all these cards. This was the other one. I just want to like move up to five damage or horror from your investigator. Assets controlled by investigators. Your location for each asset defeated by this effect. Draw one card. Remove wrong place, right time from the game. Interesting. See, this one got a wild, but this one didn't. I think this one should could have been like brain fist wild. All right. Well, we've already seen like all. We're already at the, like the oh fire axe and mariner's compass. Okay. Dude, we've, I mean, we've seen so many Survivor cards. I think a lot of our time is going to be talking about other stuff. All right, Fire Axe. One cost, two experience. Commits for two fists, hand slot. Item weapon melee fast. Fight if you have no resources in your resource pool. This attack deals plus one damage. As a lightning bolt during your attack, during an attack using Fire Axe, spend one resource. You get plus two fist for this skill test limit three times per attack. The only difference is that it's fast, right? That's the only notable thing. Maybe it has one more icon, plus one fist icon. Huh. I don't know. It's not a tool? Is the first one a tool? Saving an action in... In Dark Solo is legit? Yeah, I don't know if it's too experienced legit. Like, maybe it is. Maybe it is. I mean, I would have loved to see, like, a fast and zero. I think that would have been worth two. Because then you could also, like, use the resource that it would have had to pump the fire axe, right? So, like, it's basically now giving you plus two just innately in its upgrade for one attack. I don't know, it doesn't seem enough, you know? It doesn't seem like it's... it's. I hope the Mariner's Compass has more. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's... I'm, I don't hate it. Like, I'll buy it if I'm playing Fire Axe, eventually. But I feel like it should have had, you know... I don't know what else it could have had. Maybe just Fire Axe just didn't need an upgrade, right? Maybe just didn't need an upgrade. Hmm. I, I, I think it would be if it costed zero. I think it would be if it costed zero and also was fast. But it could have been one XP and still been good. Is two XP worth an action? No, I don't think it is. I, that, cause I can answer that question. I don't think two XP is worth an action. Because I think most of the time... Like, so here's like the thing, right? Like It's a weapon. What do you do with your weapons? You get them in your opening hand and you play them on turn one, right? Like, maybe they're trying to, like, say something, like, with the hatchet. You're going to have to be a bit more, like, switching out your weapons um, quickly, right? Um, and they're trying to just say, hey, the fire axe is now part of that thing. So you've lost the hatchet, but you have this other axe, right? Oh, yeah, you also can play it in Daniela. I mean, that's not terrible. Because Daniela, that's actually not bad. Daniela can actually now run it. I don't know. I just it's not I don't think it's exciting and worth a card slot. It just as has it's printed here. Alright. Hunting jacket. This is a two cost, two experience, item clothing asset that takes up the body slot. It soaks for two and two. As a lightning bolt exhaust hunting jacket, choose one non weakness card in your hand, attach your face down to hunting jacket, then gain one resource for each attached card. When Hunting Jacket is defeated, draw each attached card. Interesting. Hunting Jacket is a good card, but I don't get the flavor connection. It seems like it's only Hunting Jacket because of Pelt Shipment. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I'm not bothered by stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of times where, like, a card is a flavor win. 
for like the Vorthos or the Melvin, whatever it is. But a lot of time they just like you just need a card and you're like, this is what we're doing with it, and I it just kind of happens, you know. Not sure what the card attaching is for. Uh, well, obviously, it's in your All Dilemma deck when you have Dead Dilemmas in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody mentioned the ruling nonsense for Hunting Jacket? No, give it to me. Give me the ruling, the question about Hunting Jacket. Give it, you can't just say that. You gotta, you gotta actually give it. But let's look at the card without this rule nonsense fair stuff. Choose one nominee, discard your hand, attach it face down, exhaust it, then gain one resource for each attached card. Dude, so it can give you a lot of resources, right? So it gives you one, it gives you two, and at that point now it's kind of like, I mean, it goes beyond paying itself off. And then when you, get th when you put the third card, you get three. So it gives you a total of six resources. So it's kind of like, it's kind of doing um, a David Renfield impression, right? You're basically like putting, you're turning cards you don't need now into resources to gain those cards later right i mean obviously it works really well with pelt shipment right obviously it works really well with pelt shipment but it's also like very cheaply costing soak right there's a ruling for oh the diana ruling yeah 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 yeah, yeah. because it has one of those things you can get three resources with it every turn. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean that, that does that does like see how they um explain like the whole um like with Diana that does make sense that it would technically work that way. Um we've always disagreed with that Diana ruling. Um, so, like, we wouldn't, we would never do that, but if a runer wants to have a good time doing that, hey, amen, you know? I like to partake in runing now again, um, and if you want to do it, go for it. I don't think they need to, I, I, if they, if, if they want to let people do that, I think they just let people do that, you know? I, I do think that that ruling should be rolled back, though, because that was always a strange ruling, um, at least to us here at PBG. I think Hunting Jacket's sick, though. Um, I don't know, like, when I would want it, right? Like, I don't know when I'd want it. Um, the ruling that you can, um, like, with Diana Esperance, you can actually switch the cards attached to her, even though it says, like, max one attached, or, like, limit one attached. Um, so, like, it's, like, one of those things that with this, then you could actually just do this endlessly to get three resources over, 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 and over. Explode the jacket with the goat. That does seem like actually a pretty neat uh, set of synergy right there. I actually, I'm kind of into that. That sounds like a fun time. Um, yeah, I think the jacket's sick. I don't really have too much more to say. Um, other than, like, it seems like good economy. It's, it's a very interesting trade-off, right? You're basically giving up a card in your hand for money. And is that worth it? Um, probably, yes, if you need money. And if you don't need money, this card is actually just phenomenal soak for its price, right? Like, that's the thing. You don't need to use the ability every turn to make this card worth it. I think, like, um, this is, like, if you use it twice and it pays itself off a little bit and then eventually use the third and it soaks two and two for you, that's great, you know? All right, Mariner's Compass. Level two, two cost, commits for two book, which I think is also new. Uh, item tool takes up the hand slot. It's not fast. Uh, exhaust Mariner's Compass, investigate. If you fail, ready Mariner's Compass. If you succeed and have no resource in your resource pool, discover one additional clue to your location. During an investigation using Mariner's Compass, spend a resource, you get plus two. Um, book for the skill test, limit three times per investigation. So the difference is that if you fail, it readies. Honestly, I think that's an okay change. Um, I think that's... I think that's... Well, not... Like, not gonna, like, chain... It's also one resource cheaper. That's also pretty good. I think that that's a good upgrade for Mariner's Compass. Because uh, it hurts to fail on a Mariner's Compass test. Like, you're just like, that really sucks. And this basically takes that um, sadness out of it and turns it into just another attempt at it. Like, yeah, you lose the resources for it. Um, 
but in the right deck, you can do it in other ways. It kind of just changed how Mariner's Compass is there. Uh, how Like, how it plays. Um, would I rush to do it? Probably not. I would probably get other stuff first. But going into, like, scenario 5, 6, or 7, I think the upgrade of Mariner's Compass is going to work for the last little bit. As a tool, Wilson can take the fine-tuning upgrade and you get two uses of this per round. Pretty sick. That's pretty sick. All right, we've seen all the... Wow, it's all... Well, there's only one more card left. Dark Horse. Okay, let me guess. I haven't seen this card. It's probably going to be just a permanent, right? Probably just a permanent. All right, three out of five experience. Permanent, limit one per deck. During the upkeep phase, you may choose not to gain resources. Well, you have no resources, you get uh, all across the board. A permanent Dark Horse! Yeah! I mean, if you're a Dark Horse deck, you just do this, right? You just do it. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think, like, uh, I think you can get by without it, but it does make at least your deck not have to rely on finding it, right? Which is good, and playing it, but then you can do all your other stuff. Um, you could just get it, right? Great for your Salus Flex. No, I need to use my resources for playing all my sexy cards. <laughs> all my cards that I need to play. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, it just makes your Dark Horse decks more consistent. Um, I don't know if Dark Horse has gotten enough juice. I think Hunting Jacket's good for Dark Horse, right? You can turn your... Um, turn cards you don't need into money to fuel your Fire Axe and your Mariner's Compass. It's good. I, I It's not exciting. I, I think that... Um, um, Looking at all of these, um, most of the cool survivor cards were actually spoiled in advance, I think. I think they did a good job with the, survi with the survivor cards. I think this is still my favorite survivor card. Um, I think this is my favorite survivor card still of the set. When you add Dark Horse 5, it removes your other level, one, level 0. Yeah, if you only have one level 0, it would upgrade out of your deck. If you had two dark horses, you would uh, it would you'd cause the world to blow up. So just don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I like survival technique because it just does something different. It's just a cool card, you know. It's just it's just a cool card, a new archetype to play with, and that's always really exciting. Yeah, survivor got good cards. It got a uh, I mean it got a, a vicious blow. What more can you ask, right? It got a vicious blow. Before the leaks, I'd say Survivor won. Now I'm definitely saying Survivor lost. Interesting. I think, yeah, that's kind of fair. Oh, there's a Keep Faith. I just skipped right by this. <laughs> I skipped the, the Keep Faith. I'm like, yeah, this card exists. Okay, we have a Keep Faith to talk about. Zero cost, two experience. Fast, play during any Lightning Bolt window. Add four Blessed under the Chaos Bag. Those who walk in faith need not fear the dark. Just cost zero. Yep. Uh, most times when you're playing blessed decks, you have access to down the rabbit hole, so a Keep Faith upgrade is, is a good time. It's, it's one of those things where, like, uh, it's just easy. It's just an easy upgrade you'll get eventually, yeah. I think Guardian Survivor competed for the worst set of cards, but both still solid. I, I mean, I don't think the, no, I, I actually think the Guardian cards are worse. I think the Survivor cards are very powerful in certain places, right? Um, they're bland. I agree with that. I think they're kind of boring. But, like, Survivor can't have gotten the worst cards when they got this Matchbox, right? The Matchbox is insane. It's a very powerful card. Push to the Limit is a very powerful card. Sparrow Mask is probably the second best mask, right? Um, Long Shot's incredible. Um, and then uh, we got, like, you know, a whole new archetype. So I, I don't think they're the losing class. I think their upgrades are bland. I agree. I mean, I, I love Persistence very me, you know. But I think overall, every class got good things to play with. I like the Guardian cards. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I think Bless is kind of a boring mechanic. So I'm not surprised that the Guardian cards aren't that exciting, you know. Persistence is stonks. I'm excited to play it in Min. All right, we got some neutrals to check out. 
All right, bide your time. Zero cost event commits for a wild. As initial cost to play, bide your time, spend an action. During your next turn, you may take two additional actions. What is that one card? Uh, borrowed time? I think that's Lily Chen, 1920s coat and hat over her usual fit. I think it is too. Yeah, you can actually see like the flowers on her thing here, on her, her normal outfit. And she's just waiting until she can like, you know, just like fucking uppercut a ghoul, you know? Um, yeah, I, I think like it's fine. It costs zero, so, like, it's really easy to just, like, run one of these in your deck, and when there's downtime, just be like, ah, next turn, you know? But then, like, you have that situation where it's like, uh, nothing happens next turn, you're like, I guess I'm gonna just, like, draw a card, you know? You have to assume something is gonna happen, but I agree with what, um, Gurik Samples Games is saying in chat. This is a good card to exist. I think it's just a nice, easy card to be in the card pool, and, uh, it, it can lead to cool combo stuff, or, like, tech stuff in the future. I think the card's neat. All right. Dawn Star. Uh, one cost, one experience, ritual blessed. Fast. Play after revealing chaos tokens during a skill test to your location. Ignore the modifiers of each curse token revealed during this test. For each curse token ignored, deal one damage to an enemy at your location. That's pretty good. Um, this also uh, does the broken stuff with the rod if that does uh, continue to be the case I love it with the uh, if you're playing like the like Armageddon I think curse did actually like I think curse um, uh, curse got is feasting this mechanic Sorry, this 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 campaign, um, fee, uh, curse got a lot of good stuff. You know, I think it's like now really kind of like its own happy little bean. You know, um, what are the modifiers of each? I think this card's good. I don't think it's bad. I think like you're gonna run it all, obviously only in curse decks, right? But like, say for example, you have that turn where you reveal three curse tokens and you're like, ah, fuck it, I'll just kill this thing. You know, and also pass the test. It's kind of like a it's it's kind of like a lucky for curse decks that also deals damage, right? Don't know if this works with rod. You don't ignore the modifiers if you only reveal them. Oh yeah, now that that's a good point. Yeah, because you ignore the modifiers. Yeah, so those ones, their modifiers aren't. They're just actually no. That's that's, that's a good call. That's a good call. That it, it probably doesn't work with the. The wording on that. Yeah, I like Dawnstar. It, it's a lucky. It's a lucky for curse decks. Is the rod a test anyway? No, but you can you can use the rod during skill tests as it's currently worded, and it counts as revealed tokens during that skill test. And that's why we love the rod here. Alright, I think this card's sick. I, I I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna play the hell out of this card in curse decks. Alright. Broken diadem. Diadem? Diadem. One second. Diadem? Diad. I mean, I've, I've seen this word, but I've never pronounced this word. Diadem. Diadem. The broken diadem. Um, that's a bit skirting the rules. Uh, not as written. <laughs> that's the problem. That it works exactly as written that way. Um, but it comes to be whether if that is intention or not remains to be seen. I think that they should let it ride. I think that they should let the wand ruling ride and just let people have fun for a bit. Because it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good time. Alright. Broken Diadem. Limit one per deck. Limit one mask per investigator. So this item turn mask costs five experience and it's a neutral card. All right. After a skill test, your location ends, and with both a bless and curse tokens are revealed, place one resource on this card as an offering. Then, if there are three offerings on this card, search your bonded cards for Twilight Diadem and swap it with this card, moving all offerings from this card to the Twilight Diadem. All right, Twilight Diadem. Oh, it, it's got the mask now. 
Um, Crown of Dying Light, uh, Bonded, Broken Diadem, Limit 1 Mass per Investigator. As a reaction, when you reveal either a Bless or Curse token during a skill test, spend one offering and exhaust this card. Treat the uh, as an Elder Sign instead, returning to the Chaos Bag. Then if no card, if this card has no offering, search your Bonded cards for Broken Diadem and swap it with this card. Interesting. So if you do... Uh, a paradox where you reveal both a bless and a curse, you get to place a resource on it. If you do that three times, your bless and curse tokens turn into elder signs. Um. Yeah. Father Mateo would probably play this card really well. It's slotless and only one resource. I think you're forgetting about these five little dots underneath the resource cost, which certainly add to it. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I think this is like uh, the, the, zero, the, the, the neutral five cost card, which is like cool, but not um, particularly um, good, in my opinion. I think it's fun. Um... You have to build around it, so like there's only a few decks that you're going to play it in, but I think in those decks it's a really good payoff, right? I think it's it's a good payoff um, for those decks, which is nice, because I think Paradoxical kind of doesn't have that, like, extra, um, that extra little, like, payoff other than just, like, passing tests. And this allows you to pass it, um, pass it a bit more i actually would not be upset if father mateo was tabooed to be blessed as zero five i think the motherfucker deserves it i think the motherfucker definitely deserves it weird things happened in the forgotten age chat they made strange choices for father mateo for finn edwards and ursula downs in that box i think calvin's fine where he is though so Parallel Monteo to get blessed to 05? No, I think they should just taboo him. Cool card. It's neat. All right. I don't really care about basic weaknesses, so we're just going to burn our way through these. Maimed Hand. Uh, it takes up the hand slot. Interesting. Oh, that makes sense. It's a Maimed Hand. You can either put Maimed Hand into play in your threat area or take one damage and shuffle into your deck. It cannot leave play except by the double action ability below. You get minus one health to discard Maimed Hand. Okay. Interesting. So it looks like all of these follow the exact same structures. They just take up a different slot and they reduce a value. My question is, what happens if you have maimed hand and draw tree hands? Um, probably the same thing that happens if you get a, a straight jacket when you are holding um, the king in yellow. It goes back into play. So I like these, because even if you get... Alright, so let's just look at this. Uh, so And you also can, like, kick the can down the road and just take damage. So this is take one damage, get minus one health, discard back injury. These two are sanity. We have the Silver Moth. You must see their... Uh, take a Horror, minus one sanity, accessory slot. Um, a Horror, minus one sanity. The Vow of Dritz Uh It takes up the Arcane slot. Um, yeah, so I actually, I think these are pretty all right basic weaknesses, right? The Vow is a dead weakness for a ton of investigators. I mean, yeah, I think that's like kind of unavoidable with cycles like this, right? Um, however, um, most basic weaknesses are easy, right? And you still get that minus one sanity. So if you ignore it forever, it could just creep up and you'd be like, oh, I have to take these two actions at a double time. I feel like these are actually going to get... Um, I think that these are going to get people more than you think. I think they're going to like actually matter more than you end up thinking. Because there's going to be a lot of time where you're like, um, I don't want this. <laughs> Like, I, I don't need to worry about this, so I'm just going to let it let it ride. And then suddenly you're like, if I draw the wrong card this Mythos phase, I'm dead. Right? Or you're like, suddenly like that. It's... Like, I think only Maimed Hand and Silver Moth matter for their... Um, 
for their slots, but I think the effect on each of them is kind of still fair across the board, you know? Uh, I do love with the Silver Moth and the Vow, though, you can now ping enemies <clears throat> with Agnes in the upkeep phase, which is kind of fun, right? I, I, I like these ones more than the previous two cycles basic weaknesses. I think these are actually um I think these are weaknesses that are pretty chill. Um I mean obviously I do wish basic weaknesses were stronger. Um but I like these ones more than the other ones because I do think the minus one health and minus one sanity is gonna matter more than you think. And I will not I would not count these ones as re-rolls for standalone. I think that you just kind of like, you let it ride, baby, and if it happens, it happens. I think these ones are actually like pretty good for that as well. Yeah. I think they're all fine designs. Nice. Okay. And with that, those are all the Hemlock Veil vale player cards. Uh, we'll probably doing a video where Travis, Bryn, and I kind of discuss them and give our general thoughts on the expansion as a whole. But I think that I mean, honestly, I, I'm not a very negative person. Um, I'm a salty person, but I, I don't really like... My, my, my only complaint <laughs> about this is that I just wish that certain different cards came out during spoiler season. That's all I really have to say. I think the designs are pretty sick. I think there's a lot of cool stuff. I think a lot of decks got a, light, a lot of good pieces. Um, and I think that there's nothing that's like there that makes me um be like oh this card is just like like a cyclopean hammer you know and if there is a cyclopean hammer lurking in here i think it's not an obvious cyclopean hammer so like that is dare we say a win you know and i mean the reality is too is that designing cards is hard um like, even the best custom designers are releasing player cards that I think are, um, like, that have the same rough, like, you know, hits and misses as these just leaning. I, I think that, like, I was talking with this about Travis. The, the Rod is actually probably the most elegant version of this I've seen, and I've seen a lot of custom content creators do certain sort of stuff as this. It's hard to make these effects elegant, and I'm actually really impressed. That's why I love the Rod so much. You know, because it's like, it's chaos magic for the first one in a very, very elegant way. So I think that, I think the designers did a very good job. They have some that are a little bit chunky and funky. Um, but as I said, card design is a hard thing to do. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.